Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's been some time. WordPress 6.6 is out. So I'm just gonna dip in to show you some of the things that are changing, some of the updates that we have here in WordPress 6.6 and show off largely the most impactful thing, like the thing that you'll be touching more than anything else in this update which are sync patterns overrides and showing you what the value is for you or maybe your clients or if you're working with somebody else on a WordPress site, how that can impact that relationship. WordPress 6.6, I have the official blog post pulled up. You can scroll through it. I'll link this up uh, in the comments below or in the description box, talking about what's inside of the Dorsey update. We have some minor adjustments to some of the styling features uh, that you now have access to. Uh, there's a this headline here says simplify your workflow with it with a new layout for pages in the site editor. I've been talking about this for a little while, especially if you listen to the podcast. Uh, we are starting to see the hints of the new WordPress admin coming soon. So when you're inside the site editor and you're looking at the list of pages or uh, templates or patterns, that user interface, that thing that you're looking at might look a little bit different than it did in the past. And that's actually what the overall admin is gonna look like for WordPress in the future. Auto updates, your plugins with peace of mind. Enjoy the convenience of plugin auto updates with the safety of rollbacks. So that's a thing now. Auto updates has been there for, I think a little bit. It's just the ability now to roll back just in case uh, things go awry. Customize content and synced patterns. This is the, <clears throat> the one that I will show because you can set the overrides for heading, paragraph, button, and image blocks when placed in the sync patterns. We'll review that and talk about why that's useful. Uh, performance, accessibility, there's a lot more under the hood. So I will also link up Anne McCarthy's uh, Source of Truth, which when you scroll down this list is a lot larger than the official blog post because there's just a lot of underpinning stuff, stuff that's much more technical, stuff that's setting the groundwork for the future. And then things like the Block Bindings API is gonna really set the groundwork for future enhancements for things like custom fields. You might've seen custom fields below your post editor before, like what, what is this, how do I use this? Or maybe you're using advanced custom fields to do some more advanced custom field things on your WordPress website. Um, imagine a world where there's those kind of uh, custom field features built into the core of WordPress, which sort of kind of exists now, but there's no UI layer for it to actually do these things without being a developer. If that stuff is built into WordPress core, uh, we're going to start to see WordPress become an even better content management system, not just the website editor, but content management system, uh, because that's gonna open it up to everyone without the need of third-party plugins. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the things that we can touch and feel in WordPress 6.6, .6, and that's going to be the sync pattern overrides, and then the grid block, which you can now turn a group block into a grid. Let's hop on over and okay, take a look at that. Here we are, blank page. We're gonna go ahead and put a grid block in, so we're gonna go slash grid, uh, and this actually can start with a group, so let me just show that off. So if we say this is a group, uh, you can change it to a grid right here, but even if it was started as a one sort of container group, um, I can select this uh, group block here, go down or go up and transform into a grid, and that'll give us the options on the right-hand side to set minimum column width um, and continue to add columns to this uh, freely or do manual and assign a certain amount of columns. And then we have all of our standard sort of uh, design uh, options that we can go in, largely padding, margin, uh, typography size, background image, all that stuff is just like it's doable in a group block, you can do it with a grid block, and that'll allow you to set up uh, a more stylized container for grid type content. So grid, you can change a group to a grid, you can put a grid in, you put a grid inside of a group. Uh, happy days, we now have grid. Okay, let's talk about making this new pattern and checking out the override uh, options here that are now available to us. First thing we'll do is create a group. And for example's sake, we'll add a heading. This is my call to action. We'll add some sub headline text goes here. And then we'll add a button, super simple example, call to action link. Let's add a spacer block just to give me some room here. And now we'll select our new group and give it a little bit of a background so that we can just differentiate it and see the difference. So this might be 
a block that you're using throughout your entire WordPress website. You're using it on the homepage, product pages, um, or maybe you're working with a colleague or a client and you're saying, hey, every time you want to add uh, this call to action block, use my call to action block. So uh, for right now, we're just going to rename it here, which is only renaming it uh, in the list, but call to action pattern, just to show you as an example. You can label it call to action pattern. This is not something new in WordPress 6.6. You can rename this block so that you can differentiate it in your list. Um, but now what we'll do is turn this into a pop proper pattern. So we'll go ahead and click on create pattern. We'll call it call to action pattern. We'll give it the mat category because I made it and it's going to be synced. So when it's synced, it's going to, it means that whenever you make a change to this synced pattern anywhere on the website, it's going to sync those changes across all uh, of the areas where that pattern shows up, homepage, post page, wherever. Uh, the idea is as the webmaster, as the designer, you can come in and say, you know what, we're going to change that background color just a little bit. And I don't want to have to go to every single page and change that background color. I just want to do it once and have it synced across the entire site. So that's what a synced pattern uh, means to you. But what if you wanted to use it in the context of changing the headline that's in this pattern on a different page? So if, it's, if this is your call to action to sign up to the newsletter, you'd be able to come in and change the headline to say, you know what, I want this to, uh, I want this change for the within the context of my content. Hey, you, thanks for reading this post about pizza. Sign up for the newsletter for all the best pizza. But you can use the same pattern on a post about beer and say, hey, thanks for watching or reading this post about beer and then change the headline uh, accordingly. How do we achieve that? So we're gonna head and click on edit original. This will bring us into sort of like this pattern uh, builder where now you can select the different blocks inside of the group block. And if I were to select the headline, I can go to advanced and enable overrides, give it a name. So we'll say CTA headline, enable. And then the same thing for, let's say the sub headline, we'll say CTA, subheadline enable, but we won't do it on uh, the button block because maybe we don't want our colleague or our customer to change where that link goes. That's very important that they don't mess that up. They don't delete the link. They don't delete the button where they change the location, but we don't mind if they change um, the headline and the text. They can't change the design of the block. They can't go in and modify um, you know, the look and feel of the block, but they can certainly change uh, the text within the block. So let's go ahead and take a look on how, what that looks like when somebody interacts with it. Okay, so now I'm on the sample page, uh, just as, a, as an example, that if you are using that pattern in line to content, right, sort of the idea behind, you know, using this override feature is, say I wanna put that in, uh, we'll pull up the call to action pattern. And again, let's just say that this is a blog post about uh, pizza. You can notice really quickly if you squint, <laughs> when you click in to the block, it sort of fades out on the areas that one can edit in the content. So you can see it just kind of fade out on the headline and the subheadline, but not the block. And on the right-hand side, you can see that the content available to us is the CTA headline and the CTA subheadline, but no other uh, settings on changing the look and feel. Like I can't change the background of this uh, unless I'm in the pattern manager and editing the original. From here, I have only have access to change this headline. So this is my new headline. This is the subheadline that I'm changing. And then I can't click in to this block, right? So pat sync pattern overrides, again, gives us the benefit of sync patterns and then allows us to punch in for our clients and colleagues, other people using the site, even yourself, just so you don't break anything <laughs> when you're reusing this. Like, yeah, I don't wanna get, I don't wanna mess up the look and feel of this either. So you can create these overrides for just these particular 
uh, content sections. Very powerful uh, and going to be even more powerful in the future. Okay, one last Easter egg that I wanted to throw into this video because uh, I'm quite happy about it, puts a smile on my face, and maybe encourages you to do the same. There's something called the command palette. We've talked about this before. Uh, if you're in the site editor portion and hopefully in the future of WordPress um, throughout the entire admin dashboard, it lets you get, so, it lets you get around to different uh, areas of the website faster and easier so you can navigate uh, between all of the maybe the complex menu systems of the site editor. Last, all the last few versions of WordPress, there was no quick way to get to template parts. And to me, that's been very important. It's a very important part of building a website is editing your header and footer template parts, but you could never get there through um, the command palette. Or I think it was there earlier, but then they removed it some versions ago. And I, I think we need it back. I think we need that back because don't we want to get to template parts so much faster rather than going to patterns and then down below with the patterns, finding the template parts and you're making all these clicks. When I'm working in my templates, I want to quickly pull up the command palette and get there. Now you can, thanks to me and some of my friends, if you go to the bottom uh, of the WordPress 6.6 uh, post, you see everyone who contributed to WordPress in some form or fashion, be it code or just an idea. So if we just search for me, I actually had it pulled up already, pull up Matt Medeiros, you can see it right down here uh, next to this guy, Matt Crom. I don't, I don't know, don't know him, uh, and then Matt Mullenweg. And it's just really nice uh, to feel like I had an idea, I went to GitHub, I said, I think we need to have template parts in the uh, command palette so I can quickly get there. Uh, and then my friend, Brian Cords, who's also uh, listed here, uh, is the one who picked it up and started to develop it and actually say, hey, I think I can build that for you. He started building it and then others helped him sort of carry it across the finish line. And of course, we can't forget uh, Mark Zemanski, who said, hey, I think uh, if you're going to complain on Twitter like I was, like I want this thing in temp, I want template parts in the command palette, I think you should do something about it instead of just complaining about it. So I went and posted it uh, to GitHub and the whole thing uh, was a domino effect from there. So now we have uh, template parts in the command palette. Thanks uh, to everyone who helped me with that. And now you can quickly get to template parts when you're surfing the back end of your site editor via the command palette. It's the WP Minute. Thanks for watching today's video. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you want more. Leave a comment below. What are you excited about on WordPress 6.6? .6. See you in the next one.